some of the things we're multiplying, they're actually very easy to do. Um, remember I told you, mathematicians work hard so we can be lazy. We try and do as little work as possible. So let me just pop this out of the way. Um, whenever you are multiplying by any of these numbers, and there are a few extra ones as well, but this is a really good set to start with. Whenever you're multiplying by these numbers here, there are some strategies or shortcuts you can use that make things much simpler. Okay? So let me show you some of them. 2, 4, and 8 to start with. Here, I think most of us are pretty good at doubling. That's a skill you start practicing very early on. So we double, we know how to make something twice as big, and that's like manageable. Numbers don't get like crazy out of control like um, some of these ones we did over here. If instead of asking, being asked to multiply by 2, you get asked to multiply by 4, remember that 4 is 2 times 2, right? 2 times 2. So therefore, you can double, but then you can just double again, and that'll get you up to 4. So, here's my strategy. Instead of thinking, okay, what's the first, and then the second, and then the third, and then the fourth multiple, I think about doubling. Doubling is pretty easy to keep in my head. Okay, not to be too boring, though. What do you think I would say for 8? If I double once, I get to 2. If I double twice, I get to 4. Christian? Doubling 4 times. Okay, now this is a really sneaky one. Okay, now doubling 4 times is a great instinct because 8 is, don't write this part, but 8 is uh, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. Look, there it is, 4 times. However, what kind of operation are we working with right now? It's right at the top of the board. This is um, multiplication, right? Multiplication. And in fact, even though it is 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, four times, what I'm interested in is not how much they add. I want to know how they multiply, right? So even though this is true, what's more useful to me is how many 2s do I have to multiply by? So to get to how many 2 goes into A. Yeah, so I'm going to do it three times, right? Do you see that? So how many times should I double? Three times. So double it three times. Okay, fantastic. So two, four, and eight, they're kind of like a little family together. When we get to 10, we're going to go in a different direction. Now, if I asked you, okay, can you tell me, don't shout it out yet, but can you tell me what six times 10 is? Okay, I think most of you know the answer quite quickly. Put your hands down, it's okay. I want you to think about how would you work out the answer if you didn't know it straight away, if you didn't know um, that it was, in fact, 60, okay? How would we go about it? What, what process would we go through? Yeah? Add a zero to the last number. Uh, okay, now you're already going into the shortcut, right? And I want to know why that shortcut works. Let me tell you how I multiply numbers. I, I go through my tables. I, I know my tables. Most people have learned them. Here are my tables, right? Uh, help me out. 6, 12, 18, what's the next one? 24, 30, starts to get a bit bigger, 36, 42, 48, almost there, 54, and then the 10th one is 60, which is the actual answer I'm after, right? Now that was okay because I knew what that number was, and as you can see, as we've mentioned, in fact all I need to do is from my original number, I can just pop a zero on, that's nice, I can do that for any number I like. So I'm going to insert zero on the end. It's not only faster, but you know what? There's lots of numbers that I don't know the times tables for. For instance, I don't know about you, but I don't know my 217 times tables very well. Uh, 217, 434, uh, I'm just going to stop there, right? If I want to multiply by 10, I can know it's going to be 2170. Right? Just instead of the zero. Okay, now 100's in the same family. What do you think I could do if I want to multiply by 100? Yeah, go ahead. Very good. Because multiplying by 100 is, just like we saw before, it's multiplying by 10 twice. Notice that, right? Multiply by 10 once, then do it again. So I can insert zero, zero on the end. Okay. Now, we're almost at the end here. 5 and 9, even though they don't look like it, the strategy, the shortcut I'm going to show you is actually in the same family as this 10 and 100 here. Okay? 5 and 10, they are related to each other. How is 5 related to 10? Yeah, right. Nice. Very good. 5 is exactly half of 10. Okay? So since it's half of 10, 
what I can do is, if I know what my number is, all I need is, what's half of that number? And then multiply it by 10. Does that make sense? Like I'm doing those two steps. So for instance, if I wanted to multiply 6 by 5, okay? I already know what the answer is because again, you guys know you are on tables very well. But another thing I could do is, well, half of 6, which is... Half of 6 is just 3, right? And then I add the 0 on, right? You guys are so quick, you're already on my next step, okay? So, the way I'd say this is, half the number and then just like we did before you can insert the zero on the end multiply by ten okay I left the sneakiest one till last we're multiplying by nine now I said to you before it's in the same family as ten how is nine connected to ten yeah I just want to say, you know the strategy for five, it won't work on odd numbers. Ah, okay. It won't work for odd numbers. Funnily enough, it kind of will. And I will show you in future how it works. You're right though, it is a bit of a, huh, what is half of 217? You don't, and you get like bits of numbers. And we will talk about those bits of numbers later on this year. But I'm so glad you asked that. Now, sorry, we were coming back to nine, right? Nine is just one less than 10, right? One less. Than 10. So I'm going to write the strategy down and then we'll try and explain it. Right? Here's what we do multiply by 10. That's the first thing you do, and we already know that's super easy to do. You almost don't even have to think. But after you've multiplied by 10, yeah, Bradley, do you want to suggest? After you multiply by 10, the number that you're multiplying will minus off of that percent. Very good. So you first multiply by 10, <laughs> and then secondly, and I'll explain this in a second if you were like, what? Where did that come from? Okay? You're then going to. That's the two things. That's just two. Work. That's the same thing. They're just confused. That's not like. That's okay. <laughs> so I just to repeat, we're going to multiply by 10, and then we're going to subtract the original number. Okay. Now, just before I show you how this works, let's just confirm that it actually does work. We were working with 6 before, weren't we? Now, you already know what 6 times 9 is. I've written it on the board, 54. You insert the 0 on the end, which is the first step. That gets you to 60. And then you subtract the original number, 6. 60 take away 6. Does it work? Yeah. It does work, right? Now, the big question, why? Why does it work? Does anyone... And it's okay if you can't think of one right off the, I'm putting you on the spot, but does anyone want to give a suggestion on, not just like that it works, but why might it work? Yeah. Um, because it's all addition, so, and the opposite of addition is subtraction, so if you take away, it would be the same as nine. Very good, so if you didn't catch that, right? Nine, right, it's like add nine times, right? Add nine times and you'll get there, just like we counted out before. But adding it nine times is the same as adding it 10 times and then, coming back one. Do you notice that? It's like you get all the way to 60, the 10th one, and then you just say, look, just, you, you went a bit too far. Just come back a little bit, okay? Does anyone want to offer another suggestion? That's a great way to understand. Any other takers? Yes? I have another method. So if you're doing 6 times 9, then instead of 6, you just go back 1 to 5, and then five, 9 minus 5 is 4, so then it'll be 54. Okay, interesting. So in case you didn't catch what that was, 6 times 9, we go back one number, which is 5, okay, so that's back one number from this. And then what you want is a pair of digits that adds up to 9, and the, the pair that, that is 5 and 4 in this case. I guess if you went, well, let's say, um, no, let's do a different number. Let's do 8 times 9. I guess if I were trying to use that strategy, I'd go back one number, which is 7, and then I think, hmm, what's the digit that adds up? to 9 if I use those two. And it's 72, which is indeed the 8th multiple. Okay? Um, there are things I like about that, um, and there are things I like about this method. It's kind of nice to have lots and lots of strategies in your toolbox so you can choose whichever one feels most comfortable.